Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, cruisers. Welcome to another Cruise and Travel YouTube Live with me, yours truly, Bill Panoff. And uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, um, I've been in the cruise business for 40 years. That's right, I started when I had hair. Can you believe it? And 40 years later, I'm still going strong. I started off, uh, for those who don't know, as a magician on cruise ships, and then I became a cruise director, and now uh, editor-in-chief of the leading cruise magazine, Port Hall. Also host of a new TV series that lives here on YouTube called Port Hall Cruise and Travel, where we go all around the world visiting ships, destinations, and we relay that for you in 20-minute uh, shows that appear on this channel. Today, we are thrilled to have with us Alana, better known to many as Life Well Cruised. Alana is an avid cruiser who inspires travelers to create dream voyages. And we'll be taking questions throughout the YouTube Live. So feel free to write a question in the comment below and tell us what was your first cruise, your favorite cruise, what you like most about cruising, anything that's on your mind. And without further ado, it's a great pleasure to introduce Alana, the face behind Life Well Cruised. Alana, how are you? Hi, Bill. Hi, everyone. I'm doing great. Um, thank you so it's much so for nice, having me. It's so me. nice to see you. We've been, we've been wanting to do this for a long time, and uh, now we finally have. And uh, tell me a little bit, uh, what made you gravitate towards cruising? Is there anything in particular? Um, yeah, absolutely. So we booked our first cruise. Now it's almost 20 years ago. I can't believe it where the time has gone. But basically, when we did book our first cruise, we thought it would be an anniversary cruise um, for our 10th anniversary, and that it would be one and done. And then we ended up finding out that we loved it so much. We actually went just my husband and I. But when um, when we were on board the cruise ship, it was a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. And, you know, we watched the kids in the pirate parade and like all of the families having such a good time that we thought we definitely want to bring our kids back on this. Um, and then we did. So about a year later, we had our children with us. And then about a year later, we had our children and the grandparents with us. And we just found uh, it was mostly an amazing family vacation. And then sometimes sure. we did it as a couple's getaway as well. But I just couldn't go back to, you know, like camping, which I only tried once. That was it. And, uh, you know, or even, you know, renting a condo somewhere or going to a theme park. I just found that cruising had the combination of relaxed time and fun and adventure that was perfect for us. And there's no more affordable vacation out there. I mean, where can you go where you unpack once the scenery changes, the entertainment's included, the activities are included, the drinks are included in some cases. I mean, doesn't get any better than that. Absolutely. And you don't have to cook. Uh, you know what? I was so busy at home uh, doing the cooking and the preparing kids lunches. And, you know, I was just happy to really have a getaway that everybody could enjoy. Sure, sure. Tell me, what tips do you find to be the most helpful for first time cruisers? Um, I honestly think I know it's so basic, but I do think that when people say that they don't enjoy their first cruise, I think this is the problem. So to me, the very best tip is pay really special attention to the cruise line and the cruise ship that you choose. I think having the right match for what you want out of, vacation, out of a vacation and what you expect is really the most important. So, and I even think that price is secondary because even once you find a cruise line that you really like or a cruise ship, after that, you can work with the cabin type or the dates to find a really good deal. But if you've got the wrong cruise ship for what you want out of a vacation, you're just not going to enjoy it as much as you could. We have a question here from uh, Tracy Beck. Uh, my first cruise was on board Sitmar's Fair Star from Australia. I remember Sitmar. That was a cruise line from yesteryear. Much smaller ships back then. I think it was about... 800 to 1,000 passengers. Now today, what are 6,000 passengers? Wow. Yeah, I, I heard of that cruise line. Um, when we started, uh, we were on Navigator of the Sea. So that was already, I think, 138,000 tons. It was already kind of considered wow. a big ship, about 3,500 passengers. But um, wow, it really, it really has changed. There's a lot that's changed. But there's a variety. I think there is still something for everybody. What is your most recent sailing and where did you go and what content did you create for the viewers? Do you remember? So I had a couple of recent sailings. I like to mention both because they're both so different. So we went about, gosh, only two weeks ago, we went on Carnival Venezia. Um, I think I'm mispronouncing that, but 
I tried my best. But anyway, um, so we went on that on a really short cruise. We went on four days, which is always something like I say not to do for people. But, um, you know, we had a fun time and I wanted to check out the cruise, uh, you know, for other people to kind of get a sense of of what it was like, uh, the newest Carnival Cruise right now, at least in fun Italian style. And the one we did right before that was uh, Holland America on the Konings Dam in Alaska. Uh -huh. We loved that. Well, and in terms of cruising and packing tips and hacks that are fantastic, what are your favorite tips that you share with your followers regarding packing on a cruise, which is a, you know, it's something to it. You really need to know what you're doing there. Uh, so in terms of packing on a cruise, I mean, first of all, um, I don't think that overpacking is the worst thing in the world. I know different people have different philosophies on it. I am trying to be a bit of a better packer, packer a more organized packer, uh, but I still think you want to have what you need. But basically, to me, one of the biggest tips that I share is right now is use packing cubes. They really help you to stay organized. And I kind of feel like that when you're organized, it makes unpacking and it makes packing up so much easier at the end of the cruise. I also think being intentional with cruise outfits, I'm not sure if maybe men find this too, I don't know. But I know women, I think we really think about what are we going to wear on our cruise? So I think rather than bringing, bringing the whole closet, if we think about if we have seven nights on a cruise or 10 nights, you know, what are the things that we want to wear? And what can we even rewear? I don't think Sure. It has changed now. So for people who want to pack carry on only, you can definitely wear one dress at the beginning of the cruise and another dress at the other, you know, at the other end or put a belt on it. Or and I don't even think people care if you wear the same thing twice, but I think it's that. There's a comment here from uh, Laura King. I love cruising because I travel by myself a lot and it gives me the options of meeting people if and when I want to. I mean, what a great social uh, environment on board a cruise ship to meet people. I agree. I agree, Lori. I even have uh, a friend um, that has been cruising solo. And by the way, in like in her case, she sometimes cruises with her family. But there were other times that other people can't go. And she ended up realizing that she loves it. It's just such a nice getaway, peaceful. Sure. And like Lori said, she's able to um, choose to meet people and talk to people when she wants and to have some alone time uh, when she wants as well. We're all so busy. Sometimes getting some alone time is actually good. Sure. I see there's a lot of comments. I'm oh, yeah, to, yeah. I'm trying got to here, uh, Alex, Alex Hernandez. Hi, Alana. Have you ever gone on a Disney cruise? And if not, do you think you will go on one? Love your videos. Me too. Oh, thank thanks you. Thanks so for much, all the Alex. great tips and tricks. Oh, uh, and I, I thanks so much for the question and all the other questions that are coming in. So I talked recently about um, a Disney cruise. I know a lot of people just love them, but um, we have not done one yet. Um, okay. I had said that I wouldn't do one because I just didn't think I was very drawn to the Disney characters and that kind of thing. Although I've been to Disney World and it's fantastic. But since then, I've had a lot of people reach out to me to say that I'm missing out by not going on Disney. So I think that probably I'll have to put it on my list. Yes, you'll come off the ship wearing ears, you know, which I did. <laughs> I, mean, I, lo I love Disney. One thing I like about Disney as well is they have no casino. I mean, I'm not your average cruiser like that, but most people like to gamble. But I yeah. you know, prefer not having a casino. And uh, they use that space uh, to reapply in terms of more entertainment activities and things of that nature. That is interesting. I'm not a casino player either. Sometimes I wish I was because people look like they're having so much fun. But I always feel like I just lose money and that's not fun for me. <laughs> Here's a question from, uh, oh, we just had that one from Alex. Sorry, here we have Charles here. Charles Richard, Alana's blog, first timers on Holland, America's Konings Dam, Mexico, then Hawaii, looking at the Bahamas for December 2023. What can we tell you? What can you tell everyone about Holland, America? Oh, that's awesome, uh, Charles Richard. Um, I really liked Holland America. We did it twice. We were on Konings Dam in um, Alaska recently. So if you take a look on my channel, I do have, it, it really is a review more of the Alaska cruise, but you'll see a lot of the ship in the video as well. And we were on the new Staten Dam uh, several months ago, but I, um, I really liked the, the vibe on it. It's definitely not it's sure. not a party cruise. So, you know, for anybody who wants to party into the wee hours, it's not that. But I did find the entertainment was was nice. Um, I particularly liked the music walk. I think people really talk about that. And it is that good. The band, the dueling piano style piano bar is really fun. 
the food is really good. And we found the service to be um, excellent. So I think it kind of has um, a little bit of a traditional cruising side that maybe we're not seeing as much with the other cruise lines, but it still feels very modern and very fresh. And the food is good. Yeah. And they have a great uh, corporate chef, uh, master chef, Chef uh, Rudy Soderman, who uh, has developed a lot of the restaurants, including uh, Cell de Mir, which is on many of the Holland America ships, apart from the Pinnacle and other uh, avenues. But the food on Holland America is indeed uh, fantastic. It is good. You're right. Their specialty restaurants, like their main dining room is honestly really good, too. And their casual food, even their buffet is really nice. Um, but those specialty restaurants, oh, my goodness, they are good. We got one here from uh, JB. What should I look for to ensure I'm picking the best excursions to maximize time in the destinations? JB, that's a great question. Yeah, that is. Um, I think it does depend on the destination, but I think firstly is to actually research the destination. Usually sure. what I do to actually research it is I start with the cruise line. They offer a lot of excursions. You don't have to book them, but I do find the fact that I can see the highlights of um, a destination and then what excursions are offered, at least I can get a starting point. And then after that, I might go to cruise reviews and to blogs and to vlogs. And then I can see what I can do on my own and what I might be best off uh, booking an excursion. If it is a long day, I think sometimes the cruise line excursions are really a good value and offer you the opportunity to tour more of the island in combination with really having a highlight to do one specific activity. Sure. Getting back to the question on packing, uh, okay. now that you travel more, how long does it take you to pack? I mean, when you pack for your cruise, how long does it take you from start to finish to pack for you and your your son and your and your husband? Or do they pack individually? Oh, Bill, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so actually, no, packing itself is not is not that long, but I do start the process of packing a little bit early. So like even now we're going on a Mediterranean cruise in two weeks. So um the other day I went shopping for a couple of things I thought I needed, like I need new, you know, walking slash running shoes. I need new wedge shoes to walk, you know, because I like to sometimes wear that. So I needed something sure. comfortable. So I'll start the process of gathering things um, anywhere from two weeks to one month before. But actually packing, I probably um, about three days before start to really make sure everything is together and I pack the day before and it takes me a couple of hours. If I have to make a video about packing, it takes me a little longer. I have to be a little more intentional. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we got a comment here from Sally. I uh, love your videos a lot. Our first cruise was Holland America's Western Dam almost 20 years ago. Wow. wow. Love those <laughs> damn <ships. laughs> Damn ship. Yeah, they are fun. That's a fun thing about, uh, about Holland America. Yeah. There's another one here from Sandy. We have a lot of comments here. Sandy C, my cruise fare includes the cheers package. It states no changes allowed. If I accept the cruise line's upgrade offer, do I lose this drink package? That's a good question. Um, I would think, I, I could be wrong actually. On this, I would probably call the cruise line to be sure. Or if you're working with a travel agent, I would definitely ask them. But in my opinion, and this is only an opinion, I think um, when it comes to the cheers package, that's an add-on. That's not a perk sure. that you booked with. So in that case, I think if you change, um, if you upgrade your cabin, for instance, uh, I don't think that you would lose the drink package because you're actually paying for the drink package about $60 a day, if I'm not mistaken. But if you want to be sure, I think honestly, I would do on Carnival, you can do the little uh, chat um, on their own website or yep. just give them a quick call. Then you're going to have peace of mind. You're not going to worry about it. Yeah, good point. There's another one here, Julie Rosner. What are the top things to keep in mind when deciding between a week end cruise or a week long cruise? Oh gosh, that's a good question. I think if you have the time, then a week cruise gives you a combination of the relaxed time and the downtime that I think we all need. We all need to rejuvenate, I think more sure. maybe these days. We lead stressful lives, a lot of us, um, than a weekend cruise. But um, you know, if you have a weekend, then it's going to be a really fun weekend. So that's good too. <laughs> there you go. Linda Duthat, if you wanted to cruise with girlfriends instead of a family, is there a line you think it would be better suited for a girl's trip? Oh, wouldn't yeah. that be fun? I was talking with some people about, oh, we should do a girl's trip. I think that that's a lot of fun. I think that there's a lot of different cruise lines, but it does depend what you like to do, you know, as, as women, I think celebrity is a great cruise line to do sure. for a girl's trip. I mean, especially one of the newer ships, they're just so beautiful. So they just 
it's really classy. Um, other ships would be fine too, but we did do um, Virgin uh, a few months ago. How was and that? I thought, yeah, that was really fun. I mean, there were some things I liked more and some things I liked a little bit less. Were you on the uh, Scarlet Lady or one of the other? Uh, yeah, I think I was on. I think I was on Valiant Lady, which Valiant is the Lady. Uh -huh. Valiant. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, it was really nice, but the food is great. And we did meet some ladies that were doing girls trips and, you know, they were having fun because that nightclub is really happening at yeah. night. Uh, I have to say I was still in bed by midnight, but um, my son was out there a little bit later and I know it was really happening. And, um, you know, even during the day, there's a lot of fun things to do. It's kind of a fun vibe. On the cruise ship. They have their own beach club too, don't they? Have that in, in Bimini? I think they have like a beach club that it's part of uh, the experience. Yeah, and Bimini yeah. is interesting with Virgin because we did Bimini um, as a destination on a Holland America cruise, and it's still beautiful. But Virgin does it differently in Bimini. They actually put out after about maybe twelve or one o'clock. They've got a DJ. They've got dancers. Oh, wow. um, they have um, pool floaties, like, you know, all different kinds of really fun sure, ones. Sure, sure. You're actually having a big pool party. So I think if you're looking for a fun girls trip, Virgin could be really good. Um, if you're looking for a little bit more class and luxury, I think then that uh, celebrity could be good. But there's other cruise ships too. There you go, Linda. You heard it from Milana. Hope that helped. Charles Richard, any news on the expansion of available cruise lines at the Port of San Diego? After the total port makeover of the next few years, few choices these days because Princess pulled out. The Port of San Diego is a great port, by the way. I haven't heard anything. I don't, um, I haven't actually cruised from California uh, yet. And um, you know who actually may know a little bit more about that? I know Bill knows Sherry well, but Sherry from Cruise Tips. Sherry, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's got Cruise a lot of great me. information on cruising from that area. Yeah, so maybe that. And if I do hear anything, then I'll be sure to share it on my channel. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Here's a, another one for you. As an avid cruiser, how do you decide what to pack based on the weather? Usually do you research, you know, what area geographically are you sailing? If it's the Arctic or if it's the Caribbean, you know, do you pack based on the weather or how do you do that? Yeah, so for sure. I do. Um, I research the weather. Um, like what is the weather expected to be? Obviously we can't know hundred percent what the weather is going sure. to be the week or so that we're sailing, but I do look into, if I'm going to the Mediterranean, for instance, you know, in October, I'll look at what should the temperatures be approximately. And I tend to look more at the highs than the lows, just because the lows tend to be at nighttime. And if you're on the cruise ship during the night, you don't really have to worry about, you know, being dressed appropriately for walking around the town uh, in the evening time. But uh, I do pay attention to that because I need to know what kind of outerwear do I need. And, uh, sure. you know, of course, when I cruised um, to Alaska, that was in early May. So that was a cooler time of the year. So we really did research what would the weather be like so that I could plan, you know, to get a lightweight but still um, warm jacket and, you know, anything else that we needed. So I think it is important to look ahead of time at the weather. But even sure about 10 days before start looking at the weather reports because you never know sometimes it's unseasonably warm or unseasonably cold yeah. or it may rain so you want to be prepared here's a question from uh from stephanie davis what do you love the most about cruising alana you go first oh gosh um i love i have to say still i love being on the ocean so um I love other things about it. I think it's such a great way to vacation. Sure. Uh, I don't think there's another vacation where you can have the combination of um, fun on the cruise ship, great food, entertainment, and also destinations, um, and only unpacking once. It's like no stress once you get on the cruise ship. But I just love being so close to the ocean, other than the beach, which I like, but I prefer even being on the ocean on the ship. So. I love all of that, but my, the main thing I really love is meeting people from all walks of life and coming together as one and making lifelong friendships in the course of seven days. You know, I have friends that I've sailed with 20 years ago that still stay in touch with me. So I would say meeting people because people are generally open, not the first day, the second day, but the third day, everybody's talking to one another. And it's interesting to see that evolution, how people open up on board a cruise ship. So I would say the people, obviously the destinations and and being on the ocean is, is very magical for me. 
Yeah, you're right. It's true, eh? With um, when you do speak with people, even like the crew on board and the other passengers, yeah. it is true. And somehow all of the everyday things that people might argue about, you know, even online, nobody does that on a cruise ship. It's so nice. Yeah. 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 If you go back and if you go back in time to your first cruise and give yourself a tip, what would it be? Uh, to relax. <laughs> Um, it's good to plan beforehand, but I think, uh, once you're on the cruise, I think it's important to really enjoy all of those moments, um, you know, with your loved ones or just even to have your downtime, but just to relax. Okay. Do you believe that there's such a thing as overpacking on the cruise? <laughs> yes and no. I think it's really good to be prepared. And I think if you overpack, I mean, the worst comes to worst, you've actually just brought a few things home. Um, so I don't really think that there's too much overpacking you can do. But I think that these days, you know, it can stress you out a little bit if you do um, pack too much and if it's too difficult to pack up at the end of the cruise. So I think being intentional is always good. Here's one. This is going to be a tough one for you. <clears throat> if you could travel anywhere in the world on a cruise ship, where would you go? I think there's so many places. I feel like I keep like I watch your videos and I watch other people's videos, too. And, you know, I see different cruise line ads. So there's always new places that I um, am drawn to going. But um, I think that really maybe one of the places is I still love the Mediterranean and I want to be um, a little more maybe in the Greek Isles. I'd like to visit Venice uh -huh. um, and maybe even in that whole area too, like a tour Montenegro and maybe Israel. Um, but being in that region, I am very drawn to that. Actually, I wanted to ask you, Bill, you did an sure. expedition cruise recently. I have. I know that is getting to be like very popular Indeed it I'm is, not yeah. sure how much I want to do that, but can you tell me, like, would you suggest that? I, I, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of expedition cruises. I've done several. I've done one on Atlas Ocean Voyages, which uh, took me to Antarctica uh, two years ago. And that was uh, an eye opener. I have never been. That was uh, something I think you should include on your bucket list if you haven't done that already. I but should. most recently, I was even more impressed with uh, a cruise I did on Penance Le Commandant Charcot, which is their... Uh, polar luxury icebreaker and it was absolutely phenomenal we we flew to iceland and we boarded the ship there and took a cruise through greenland and the beauty wow. of le commandant charcot is that they they take you places that no one else can take you because it's a polar icebreaker it actually goes through the ice and carves a, a spot in the ice and then just continues on so i've stepped foot on places that no i feel like uh, you know neil armstrong with the moon but it was phenomenal so I, I'm a big believer and a big fan of expedition cruises. My next uh, destination, hopefully, will be the Galapagos Islands. Wow, that's amazing. So that's that, that'll be on my bucket list maybe in a, in a couple of years. I, uh, yeah. I feel like I am going to have to get, you know, the right clothing for that, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's a question from uh, Harrison Liu. Harry, <clears throat> where would you go after your meeting cruise? Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, maybe what Harrison means. Where would I go? After, after your meeting crew. Oh, sorry. Let me, let me, I think he wrote it again. Oh, Where would you go in the world oh. after your Mediterranean cruise? <laughs> sorry <laughs> about the autofill. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, where okay. will I go after my Mediterranean cruise? Um, I have different cruises that I am thinking about doing, um, but we are hoping that we'll get back to Canada, New England in the fall. So that is my plan. Okay. Christian, uh, what destination do you recommend to celebrate my anniversary? His anniversary, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you like? Where do you like to go, Christian? Or what do you like to do? Um, yes. Or yes. when is your anniversary? Uh, I'll just say a few ideas. But um, I do think a Caribbean cruise is always nice. There are so many nice destinations. Very romantic. The weather tends to be good. So if that's something that you and your significant other would appreciate, then uh, Caribbean is always good. But if you want something that's a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit different, maybe, I definitely would do the Mediterranean. I think um, sure. when you look at the wine and, you know, everything else that you can do, I mean, definitely the Mediterranean. There are very romantic cities, Florence, Rome, um, you know, even some of the uh, the French Riviera. 
Um, so that would be that would be my thought. Bermuda is also really nice. Actually, Bermuda's nice, yeah. Bermuda, yeah. Bermuda yeah. is like the honeymoon haven, and it's it's very close. And the cruises, you know, leaving from New York or or Boston, and you're two days and you're in Bermuda. That's nice. Yeah, and it's nice with Bermuda too that you usually get two or three days to stay in yes. Bermuda. That you can explore. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share a tip because it's an anniversary. There is um, there's a moon gate, um, this sort of semicircle. Um, it's not a sculpture, but in any case, you can walk through what's called the moon gate. And there are there are 60 of them or so all over Bermuda, but there's one right in the oh, cruise. Wow. And legend says that if you walk through um, with your significant other hand in hand, that you will uh -huh. be blessed with a long, uh, happy life together. So Wow. I didn't know that. Okay. I'm off to Bermuda. <laughs> Here's a question here from um, Mitchell S. Hi, Alana and Bill. Love your videos. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. We'll keep pushing more and more out. My first cruise was on the Dawn Princess in 1986. Wow. Nice. There was still a midnight buffet. Yeah. That's the old joke. What time is the midnight buffet, right? Uh, <laughs> Alana, I'm fairly new to your channel, and I love your tips. And I think he has a second part to his question here. Second part. Do you ever or ever have done virtual tours of ships that you were on deck by deck? Okay. Uh, virtual tours, no. Um, a ship tour deck by deck, not not really. Um, other people do them, and they do them really well. Go so uh, when I share a bit of a cruise review, then I oftentimes do go through the ship and I'll show it, but not deck by not deck by deck. Okay. Uh, Christian's anniversary is in June. Does that help you? Well, June is great for Bermuda, and it's great for the Mediterranean. Uh, and of course, if you like adventure, I think that um, Alaska is really nice too. It depends what you like. But uh, a lot of good choices. No matter what you do, you're going to enjoy a cruise for your anniversary. Alana, where are you cruising next? Uh, <clears throat> any particular cruises on the books? Yes. So we are doing uh, the Enchanted Princess. I cannot wait. Um, mm -hmm in August. So gosh, in two more weeks, and we're starting in Barcelona, oh, nice. and the cruise ends in Rome. So it's seven days, but it goes to Gibraltar, Marseille, uh, Spezia, and uh, Livorno, which is Florence. So we're looking forward to it. And we'll spend a couple of days in Barcelona before the cruise and a couple of days in Rome after the cruise. So we're very much looking forward to it. Well, that is that is exciting. My next one, I'm going on a few river cruises. I'm going to Turkey. Uh, to do some uh, content for the uh, tourists for there. And uh, yeah, that is and very back here cool. in, uh, in November. I'll be on Explorer Journeys during their new vessel from San Juan to uh, to Miami. I'm looking oh, forward. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm wondering, I'll have to watch. I'm wondering what Explorer Journeys uh, will be like. I remember um, going to the press conference a few months ago at Sea Trade in Florida. I'm thinking that um, this is really an experience on sure. uh, on Explorer Journeys. Wow, very, yeah. very nice. That's going to be nice. Alana, it was a great pleasure uh, doing this today. We have to do more of these and uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. What a, what a turnout. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And how do people so find you? For people who are not familiar with Life Well Cruise, how do they find you on uh, various social media channels? Can you, uh, can you tell everybody? Sure. So um, firstly, on YouTube, because we're here on YouTube. So uh, you can find me at Life Well Cruised. And you can also follow um, on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, just Life Well Cruised. So you can definitely follow me on my page. And you can uh, join our group as well called the Life Well Cruised uh, community um, in on Facebook. You can follow me, of course, on Instagram, where I try to share uh, some cruise inspiration and some cruise tips as well. Perfect. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Yeah. I hope we answered most of everybody's questions. No, it was great. It was great. And we, I, I th thank you. And uh, <clears throat> for those of you that want to like to see this again or haven't seen it, uh, we're going to have this on our YouTube channel. It will be on your YouTube channel as well. So you can replay it over and over again uh, if there's something that you would like. Uh, if you like yeah. something more included in the future, let us know in the comments below. And if you're following us on, uh, obviously, on YouTube, we're here at Cruise and Travel with Bill Panoff. We're on uh, Instagram at Cruise Travel BP, Porthole Cruise, Facebook under Porthole Cruise and Travel, Cruise and Travel with Bill Panoff. And uh, we're on all the platforms, LinkedIn as well. And uh, stay tuned. We constantly update and refresh the content, as does Alana. Alana, it was a great pleasure. We have to cruise together one of these days. Oh, that would be so much fun. And thank you so much for having me on, Bill. It was uh, a great pleasure. I've been following you for years and years, so it's really an honor. 
So you're the one. I knew I had a follower. <laughs> and for anybody who's left comments, if you leave them below after this is live, I'll try my best to go in and uh, and answer the questions as well in case uh, we've missed any. Okay. Thank you, Alana. All the best and enjoy your next cruise. And thank you all for tuning in. I'm Bill Panoff for Porthole Cruise and Travel. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.